Kier, the match is underway. We have seven minutes, guys, of the thingy. Softy is gone. <laughs> uh, broken. They got broken vortex. They got bubbles. What do you expect to happen here, boys? Here we go. Let's see what we got units. There's a berserker spam here from the attack inside, but that will change up because this is your units that you normally select in battle. Let's see. We'll get rid of my face here. I had to speak the facts. Sorry. That's that is well and truly up to you. <laughs> true. That's true. I mean, you're right. Sorry, bubbles. Sorry for broken word. You're probably better players than me, but I mean, sorry. <laughs> Everybody else has said it. I didn't say it. Wasn't me. Easiest twenty nine k bet of my life. <laughs> He's making money. Them channel points going. The channel points are building. And there goes my lights. Sun City. Swap around here. We've got Holy Crusaders on the attack. You have Love and Devotion. On the defense, Holy Crusaders are 1 0 up after their valiant defense versus the EU boys of love and devotion. Will it be the same way around this time? Your predictions seem to think so. 49k and on the side of love and devotion. Let's zoom out, get in here, let's see what we got here. Unit wise, we've got. Berserkers, plenty of them, grey hairs, Siladars, some grey units to push the artillery, and then you've got a wee bit of Cav in here, Jav Cav, similar idea. Oh, Keshik's, we've not seen Keshik's getting used so much here as well, so that'll be interesting to see how that happens here in chat. Let's see, let's see what's going on, they're, they're all on A side here in comparison to the EU boys who all pushed towards the B side, so using the artillery, Gonna spam shit out of the artillery, make sure that they can get the siege towers up onto the wall. Other world, yep, they're all just kind of roaming around here, making sure. But there comes a cavalry charge out here. The EU boys are feeling brave. There is a rotation of cav. They go towards the supply point. Wolfie Slayer gets on top of the unit. They'll kill the, the lower level units here, but they're so far away from the sally out. The, the NA boys. I thought that was going to happen. They've ran up and they went all the way to the right hand side and they're going up on the wall here now to use their hero advantage on the wall and grab the points. Will the cav and will these trebs be detrimental to the attack here? But it looks like the units that are getting up on the wall from the e NA side are getting to the wall and going to get climbing before the units of cavalry even get to them. There is a unit of Fort Abrasio there that's in the rotation there. Will they manage to get themselves set up here? Kiss my boom. It's going to charge straight into the side here. They're going to pick up some units. They're going to try and get the supply point here, but the heroes are starting to make it on the wall for the NA boys. Holy Crusaders down to 13. But they've got the wall already. They're going to start to push towards the A point here. There's only one hero out there stopping the supply point, and it's Adismer. He'll, he'll probably fall to his death very soon. Public enemy comes in as well. But here comes a treb on the units here. Almost trebbing their units to any boys as they come to forward. But the EU boys have to keep rotating their unit away. Palace Gar starting to make their way up to this fight here. This is going to be the main push here. As you can see from the NA boys getting into position. But Palace Guard stopping that in their footsteps. There's lots of units coming around now though. And there's going to be an opportunity for a treb. The Cav is all coming back in from the EU boys. But unit wise they have managed to gain the advantage with that sally out. But it is only a sally out against a lot, probably lower tier units just now. But we'll wait and see if anything changes that way. The any boys in a full stack start to manoeuvre themselves towards A. Not enough heroes really here to defend. And no units now for the EU boys. Rocky and Adramut and Ermark and Overlook all going to try and defend for as long as possible. Overlook picks up the kill on people. But you've got Wolfie Slayer capping the B point in the distance here. Ambience going straight towards Gorf in the far distance there as well. And the attack is starting to make its way towards A point. They're definitely fully pledged here on the A point. But the trebs are being used, quite a lot of them. We've got four trebs used already, but unit-wise we're pretty even, really, for the grand scheme of things. The any boys still have the advantage here with uh, units. But 
I oh, know it's the defending side that's got the advantage of the units. Only just though, only just. Holy Crusaders though are now set. The the EU boys can't stay out for too much longer because they risk that chance of losing their units too much. Seven hundred eighty six units left for the attackers. 781 for the defenders just depends on the quality of the units that we have left there's lots of cav out here as you can see they switched it out to all cav but unit wise they're starting to make their way around towards a b point the eu boys doing a similar strategy to the na guys who are making sure that they hold on that supply they don't want to have too much cav because too much cav can be detrimental as well uh, depending on where they plan to go with them and what they plan to do with it. the na boys aren't really looking to go towards B or C at this moment in time, but they are clustering up as much as they can here. You've got Superbone making his way down. Looks like he's pushed himself quite far out here. Is he thinking he can get some hero kills here? He moves towards Broken Vortex with the Cylidars. Broken Vortex is still trying to fight that. I don't know what he's thinking. He'll probably get smashed here. Lots of the enemy boys coming. There goes Broken Vortex. Oliver the Gordon gets in. The calf charge comes in, but there's nothing really to calf charge against. Really. Lots of calf roaming. But on the wall, the enemy boys start to make their way down. Capan falls. It's 13 versus 13 on the heroes. EU boys are going to have to start pushing towards this gate as the enemy boys start to make an effort in here. The Javcalf thrown the units and an Armager charge coming in. Not really much to do against them though. The Fort Abrasio are starting to set up in the gateway here. And the EU boys of love and devotion starting to rotate as B starts to get capped by Adesmir. On his own, nobody else there. Is there going to be a hero going to go and stop that? Or are they just going to make sure that they focus the defense down here? If you guys have voted for love and devotion, it could be one of these squeaky bum moments just now. Hey, Holy Crusaders haven't managed to cap B yet. It's been slowed down once again. Adesmir has run off with his units. People from the NA boys are trying to rotate units towards that supply point because they know the supply point is crucial here. And from the... Aerial view, you can see a lot of cavalry comes in. Grandpa picks up the brittle and broken. Adesmir and God King Azura dies. Apophysis, can they kill him off of the point here as well? As the enemy boys start to push in, here comes the cavalry rotation from people. He's going to try and get into the back here. He sees the opportunity, and the enemy boys have the numbers. Moving forward with lots of units here. There's no more units on the defensive sides. They're starting to rotate them out. But hero-wise, they've got more available. If they could get the calf charges coming in here, this could be a big push for the NA boys on that supply point. Heroes are going towards it. They're down to 12, but there's only 13 on the defense here. It's a good fight. They're neck and neck here on the end point here of supply. And who is going to win this? It comes down to the units here. Like, Unit-wise, you have Fort Abrasio. Potentially trying to stop these units of javelins. We got in the way there. We can't see, but it looks like the the hero count is in favour of the defensive side. Fatboy falls to his death. Overlook dies. Gorf picks that one up. There goes Oliver the Golden. Adroban fix picks that one up. Overlook falls to his death after. There we go. Rocky falls down to his death, but it's 12 versus 10. Any boys constantly trying to rotate in as quickly as they can with their heroes and units to try and fight for that supply point as it is crucial. We're going to rotate around here as we see the units coming in from the NA boys. Here we go, the push comes in. You've got Silidars trying to make their way. Kizu, Kappa and the Short Swords just trying to disrupt them as much as possible. And a musket bomb is going off here as well from Bubbles. <coughs> you can see Bubbles on top of the supply point here just to stop anybody trying to cap that point. It doesn't work though. It doesn't work here. Still can cap that point now with a hero on top of there, as you can see. But it is going on and off of capping. Hero-wise though, we're so close. It is 10 heroes on the defense versus 9. Unit-wise, they're pretty damn close. There isn't much really between them. If they can get a calf charge coming in here, which is looking nice. That calf charge comes in, but it doesn't really do much. But the Keshiks starting to get hit by Palace Guards. Gregorius, drip, drip, kill all the units there. And the NA boys have the advantage here. They have the advantage of you wise. There's no units here for the EU boys. They're going to have to start making a move here. They might lose this one because they're sending that so much boys on the point. Adrohan is the only person left for the defensive side on that supply point. Holding his own though, isn't Adroban doing a fantastic job there against these heroes and units on the point to stop that cap. He has a couple of units there available, but he is getting chased off from Jet Li and he will fall to his death. Papa Ambient falls down. Uh, Jet Li gets the kill on Adroban and EU boys have lost their supply point now. Now that any boys can start working that up. They're at 1400 and, uh, 419 units versus 445 units. 
It is a close one. They've got this the supply point. Now the defense is on C. A lot more trebable. And guess what? The any boys still have plenty of trebs. 11 trebs left. They've not even got B. They've got three minutes left to grab C and B. So they have to get one of these points to give yourself that advantage. The guys from Holy Crusaders are making their move towards B. Fat Boy's going towards B and the rest of the heroes and units are making their way towards C as Love and Devotion are all over the place from back and forward. They're back at the supply point. They're trying to find rotations in. They're bringing in the cavalry. As you can see, a couple of units of cavalry. Monastics being part of that as well. But the Trebs are going to be in the favour of the NA side with this push here. B will get capped here though. Fat Boy will give it. There'll be an extra three minutes or four minutes on the clock here. It might go to seven minutes left to take C. What is Love and Devotion's plan now at this point in time? What is their plan? Yeah, Lady Space Patrol is a uh, custom lobbies, and this is part of the CB uh, Rivals tournament. We're on round, what is it, five, six? I can't even remember now. Uh, but this is then early. It's normally on a Sunday. Um, but these guys wanted to fight uh, tonight because they're not available on Sunday. So we are streaming this one tonight. And then uh, we'll be streaming more tomorrow night uh, for the rest of it. Uh, there are other teams that are yet to fight. Good to come cavalry charges coming in here, but the NA boys have got the advantage unit-wise and hero-wise, or not unit-wise really, but kind of unit-wise in terms of the fight and the position where they're at. They've got more units available to their disposal in this close fight here. The defenders are down to 11 heroes. They can't be risking too much of their lives and losing units so easily here. We're almost neck and neck on units, but we are in the advantage for the NA boys with heroes. It is going in their favour. They start to make the push towards C. They'll use the pre-trebs to avoid the Love and Devotion boys managing to find a defensive strategy against them in this point of time. And the any boys will look to block off all the access points towards the C point to make sure that they get that C point and the rest of them will push forward towards the home point and start to find a way to cap the home point. You know why? They have to wait on their units. As you can see, the heroes definitely jump out in advance trying to give themselves a, an added advantage here but it's the last foot pushes it's going to be the last set of units that you could potentially get this uh the a point where they spawn from the, the attackers is quite far away so if the defense can hold off as long as possible get the heroes killed or even just the units killed and let the heroes survive so that the heroes can't go back or can't get the tribe they have to go back to the supply point and waste time and that will be one of the best opportunities that they have unit wise we're pretty close but there's eight tribes available for the attack inside of holy crusaders they will look as much as possible to find these opportunities and pull off as many units as possible Love and Devotion defending this like they would in a siege and I don't think that is a strategy if I'm honest. Any boys getting everybody together, clustered up and bringing all their units together at once. Unit wise we still have IPGs, we still have Iron Reapers, Flamers, you've got ISGs in there, Palace Guards, ter Tertios and Monastics as well. And on the defence it's Iron Reapers, Falconetti Gunners, so two sets of that, Iron Reapers, Palace Guards, Grey Hairs and Huskara, so really it looks like the any boys have a better strategy and a better setup here of units for this push here. If they get the ISGs, the IPGs and the good old flame boys in behind that, that's a nice little death box they have here going forward. Nobody can use any artillery, remember, so it's all about finding their opportunities and exposing the enemy as much as possible here. Fat Boy picks up Kizu. Down to 14 versus 14. Any boys are in the center, in behind the blockage, so they can't be damaged here from any of the units or heroes hitting them because they're all clustered together behind a wall. So it's a perfect position here. The boys of EU, Love and Devotion, are doing the exact same. They're behind a wall. Nothing could be taken. Gorf, I don't know what he's looking to do here. God King Azura picks up Overlook. Rud Ruka Kona, I don't know what he's doing, but he's full rotating towards that supply. That's also a deterrent just to try and stop the heroes dying. Public Enemy dies with the people down there because he went around that rotation as well. Rocky is trying to fight inside here. Rocky gets grabbed. Rocky will fall to his death here. Everybody's going to jump on top of Rocky there. God King Azura picks up that kill though. Bubbles getting back and forward as the enemy boys all start to make their way forward. Oh, as a big cluster of units. ISGs. Everything is going to have to get onto that point. The Trebs are going to start trebbing, pre trebbing the point here, ready to get onto the point. There's the Treb coming in. Does some good damage there. And unit wise, it looks like it's going in favor of the NA boys on the attack. Hero wise, they've got two heroes advantage as well. Make that 1 0 as one falls down. Fat Boy falls his death. But EU boys are going to have to find a way to get around and hit them from the side here if they can. Any. 
are struggling at the moment. No, they've lost a couple of heroes more here on the defense. The EU boys of love and devotion have managed to fight them off a little bit, but heroes fighting on the point here. Superbone still staying there. Drip drop staying there as well. Plenty of short swords trying to fight. Not enough damage coming in from the short swords, but overall they're staying alive, and that's the main thing. If you can stay alive, that's it. You want to get your units out of the way. A calf charge comes in. That's a nice Hussar charge, but there's really nothing there to stop that. Grandpas picks up the quad kill against people. Wolf Slayers falls to Aberdan, and it, so far, the EU of love and devotion have an opportunity to push and get these hero kills. If they can get some of these hero kills, that could be it all for them at this moment in time. They're down on units, but up on hero counts here. It's 14 versus 9. They need to group up together and kill these heroes, but they're all starting to step back here. As the heroes start to get their way back in, more units will start to make their way in here as well but love and devotion managed to hold us on the home point we have two minutes left or just under just under three minutes left there Alderban gets picked up here from Jet Li Kizu is trying to avoid the death here fat boy in other world trying to fight Kizu Kizu does fall to other world it's 14 it's 12 versus 10 here on the defense 186 unit kills versus 229 it's a very close battle the any boys still have six traps, and I don't know who has to use them, but they need to start using them in a position where it's going to deal a lot of damage to the units. Not very many units left for both sides. And when it comes to quality of units, that is where it all counts. Iron Reapers, Hussars, Woodcutters, you've got Domain Pikemen on the attacking side so far. And then on the defense, you've got ISG still available. You've still got IPGs, Falconetti Gunners, Palace Guards, Tertios, two sets of them. It's not full sets though, probably, but we're close to having full sets. Keshik's, oh no, where was that? That was it. ISG is coming in here as well. Which game is this? This is Holy Crusaders versus Love and Devotion. This is game two. Too nice. Game two. Holy Crusaders won their defense. Now it's a rough battle here. 14 versus 15. Only 14 on the defending side here. The tribe comes in from Jet Li. Very early position. Probably needs to be a little bit further forward to that opening there as the units start to move in. But this is the any boys getting onto the point with the last 1 minute and 30 seconds. All Love and Devotion need to do is stay alive and stay on that point. Hussar's coming around the back here. You've got a Hussar charge coming in from the back and a Hussar charge coming in through the centre. They're going to wipe all them units there. You're going to see a big cluster of units. Uh, IPG Mars is stopping the, IP, uh, the Hussar charge though. So it looks like it could be a win for the boys of love and devotion. We've got a minute left. Is this a GG? Is this a full cluster? Need to get the units onto the point and the heroes on the point. Trebs are going to have to come in. There's still five trebs available. Love and devotion are holding their own. We've got left with the win here from them. If they can stay alive for a little bit longer now, we're, I, I think that's it. I think that's it. I think that is GG. A love and devotion pick up the win on their defense. It was very rough. We're down 150 versus 131 units, but they are 12 heroes versus 7 heroes now, and they are starting to win this one. What a turnaround. Whoever voted for love and devotion is going to win a massive pair. 1 to 14 it was before this one, and the winner of this will get a massive, massive payout here. It is still a, a return ratio of a 1 to 11, 2.8k that went in favour of Akumo. He's going to win this one. Hero-wise, we're just going to look here. It's a GG from everybody there. GG. Jet Li is running off to try and stay alive. Oliver the Golden has picked up. Six seconds left. It's a GG, boys. It's a GG in chat. Holy Crusaders lost their attack. It was very close, though. It was very close. What a defence that had to be done at the very end there. Hello, is it on purpose that we can't see the map? My bad. I wasn't clear. Be like Steer. Uh, yeah, no, kind of. Yeah, no. Pax, I like the rogue, but bad spot. Doesn't need to be there. Doesn't need to be there. We can move it next time around, guys. Don't you worry. As you can see, though, Gregorius on the attack side, any side, picks up the MVP. Five hero kills, nine assists, 90 unit kills. Our top killer on the on the team of the any boys. 11 hero kills from God King Azura. He is really the god here, isn't he? It's 11 hero kills, nine assists, 74 unit kills. And then you've got a couple of heroes with the three and two here. But great effort from the any guys. They tried as much as they could. Uh, Grandpa, 10 hero kills. What an effort. What an effort. He is MVP. He carried the team. He was being the leader today. And 99 unit uh, kills here as well. 
Another mention, Overlook with his six hero kills. You've got Kizu with four hero kills. They were surviving quite a lot of the time. Post-match analysis, as you can see, it was so close. Fair to eight heroes killed on the, the Holy Crusader side. And Love and Devotion picking up 49 hero kills. So we're pretty close. There were 10 in it, pretty much. And unit-wise, so close. Look at this. Five. Five in it. Oh, my God. Five in it. 